Hello and welcome into a bustling Centennial Center in Milledgeville, Georgia here live with you on the NFHS Network alongside Kyle Sandy. I'm Luke Winstall. Glad to be with you. We have got the 1A Division I semifinals here. Mount Pisgah and Mount Vernon, you could say a meeting, a clash between two titans, a clash between two mountains here when you look at these programs. And let's start with Mount Pisgah coming in. You say losing record. They're in the semifinal. How'd they do it? What's the story of their season so far for people that are just getting a look at them? Yeah, not a very pretty record, but they played a very tough non-region schedule. We saw the same thing with Paideia. Hey, guess what? Paideia is waiting for the winner of this game in the state championship, another Region 6 team, the strongest region in this classification. But there was an injury very early on in the season. O'Neal Connolly, arguably their best player who signed to play at Montevallo this season, he just came back in the region uh, consolation game. So he is back in the fold for this Mount Pisgah team. They have not lost many games with him back as a six foot seven wing. And uh, even with him down, even though they didn't have a lot of wins early on when he went down with that injury, this team has really gelled together under first year head coach Jay Sloan. They moved the ball around a lot of different options. So Mount Pisgah, even though the record's about 14 and 17 off the top of my head, I think uh, they're way better than 14 and 17. They're really tough. They're ranked number seven in the state. Mount Vernon, they've been here before. Yeah. They'll likely be here again. There's all this talent in the program. Mm -hmm. When you take a look at what they've brought in, they've dealt with some injuries this season, had guys that come in, come mm -hmm. out. When you look at what they bring to the table here, 22-win team. They won this matchup earlier this season between Mount Pisgah and Mount Vernon, 69-43 back in January. So what do they have that maybe encourages you or makes you think they could win again? They have their players. When they have their players on the floor, they're very tough. K.J. Garris transferred in from Centennial this offseason. He's been one of their very best players all year long. He's picked up some Division I offers. Uh, the size jumps out at you. Uh, Trey Scott, Dennis Scott the third, uh, is a very good outside shooter at 6'10", signed to play at Georgia State. Xavier Chagog, 6'6", going to West Georgia. Is just a monster. Reminds you of a Kenneth Farid, a manimal type player that played in the NBA years ago. Uh, really gets after you in the paint. So that size alone is very intimidating. And they have good guard play. They got some guys that can knock down shots. Shia Goba has really exploded, averaging over 21 points per game in the postseason alone. Has elevated his game. All the weapons, all the pieces are there for Mount Vernon to win this game. But we saw last year they fell to a four seed in this very same spot. Something to monitor when you look at Mount Vernon in terms of the individual players, guys with potential collegiate opportunities. Yeah. One that has been improved so far lately, Shia Goba, number 24, that we'll see out there on the floor. What does he bring that maybe gives them an extra dimension? Last year, he was more so primarily a hustler. He played a lot of really good defense. Coach Maven would stick him on the other team's best player, and he would hound him and face guard him and make life difficult. He can still do that, but he has elevated his offensive production this season, uh, averaging close to a double-double during the postseason. He's just a big-time effort guy, gets some slashes to the basket, and will step outside and knock down the corner three. He's very tough. He's been averaging 22 points per game in the playoff run. The team's been averaging nearly 90 per game in the playoff run. That's why we spotlight him. The offense has gone in a good bit in the way that he's gone throughout the playoff run. Now Mount Pisgah on their side. You look at a guy like O'Neal Connolly and you say, wow, 20 points per game is what he can bring you on the floor. Is, is this a one-man show? Probably not. What else do they have? They have a lot. Tyson Pittman's done a great job, a guard that has stepped up his final season here, knocking down outside shots. Jackson Williams is a burgeoning sophomore, about six foot four on the wing, plays super hard. But the key, I think, comes off the bench most often, Ramir Young, transferred in from, I think it was New Jersey in the offseason. Total spark plug player, might not score 15, 20 points, but he'll finish with about eight points, six assists, four steals, really changes the speed of the game when he enters. We'll have the game coming right here for you in Milledgeville after this on the NFHS Network. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick of turning of hearing your kid play the wrong note. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! Did you like it? Yeah! Come on!
I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for all that you do officiating high school football. What you do matters and what you do is important for our student athletes. Without you and what you do, it's just practice. I know you've worked hard in your preparation this offseason and now it's game time. Go out there and calm like you see him. Embrace the grind. And the biggest thing of all is to have fun. Please stay safe, have a great season, and we'll all be watching. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. We rejoin you here in Milledgeville. Starting lineups coming out here. And we'll take a look at the keys to the game with Kyle Sandy. So Kyle, first off, let's start with Mount Vernon. You say a key to the game for you. You've got no letdowns and cats on the prowl. What does cats on the cats prowl Cats on the prowl, man. You gotta see where these Mount Vernon players are going. Cats on the prowl. That is Xavier Chagog. He's going to West Georgia. Uh, that is a team I think they're uh, a, a form of cat over that way. And then you're talking about Georgia State, Trey Scott. He is a Georgia State Panther. Got to get him going with his outside shot. Those are two inside-out presences uh, that can really impact this game if you are a Mount Vernon fan. Others, keys to the game, you know, Mount Pisco, you got to make sure you move the ball. This is a team that is death by a million paper cuts. It's a bunch of guys that's going to hit you up for 10 to 12 points. It's not just one guy that's going to score 25 points. And then you have to win the rebounding battle. You have to compete. I know Mount Pisca is undersized when it comes to six foot ten and six foot six of Mount Vernon, uh, but you have to bring the fight if you are the Patriots. Both teams huddled up before the tip. Mount Pisca's played to a little bit of a lower scoring tone in the playoff run 66 points per game but they've outscored their opponents by 14 mount vernon explosive offense we'll see if that travels today we'll see what that looks like 89 points per game they're beating opponents by 35 on average in the playoffs yeah they have just crushed teams looking at what mount vernon has done 104 47 against coosa oglethorpe county they beat 89 61 and then east lawrence 73 57 you compare that to the road dogs of Mount Pisgah, 61-48 at Tryon, 71-54 at Rabin County, and 66-55 most recently at Bleckley County. This team is battle-tested. Be ready to compete because it's not going to be 69-43 this time around, I don't think. Both teams feel like they're peaking at the right time. Got that score from January, you know, now early March. How much has changed? It seems a good bit for Mount Pisgah as they're out here defensively. Yes, I think they are playing way better now. They have everyone in the fold. Backdoor lob, and that's a turnover. But Mount Pisgah, again, the record doesn't look spectacular, 14 and 17, but they're number seven in the state, playing the number one ranked team in the state in Mount Vernon. But remember, Mount Vernon played a four seed from their own region last year on this stage. It was Kings Ridge. They lost to Kings Ridge. Kings Ridge went on to win the state championship. Got to make sure you don't let that happen this time around if you're the Mustangs. Such a tough region. Catch and shoot. The tray clatters off the rim from Connolly. If you have not seen Gabe Alterman, who is with the ball right now, you are going to like how he plays. He is a true floor general, a pass-first playmaker, really crafty, really savvy, knows how to make his teammates better. Spin from Chagag, and he'll get it to fall. Mount Vernon on the board. They strike first. 
foul in transition. That'll go against Garris of Mount Vernon. Push foul. Uh, number 10, KJ Garris. His first, team first. On Pisgo starters by last name, Yumanyora, Pittman, Beeler, Williams, and Connolly out on the floor. Williams hands it off to Pittman. Williams diving through traffic, it's turned over. Mount Vernon taking over, facing some pressure. Starters by last name, Alterman, Scott, Chagog, Garris, and Goba. Both teams pressing early on, don't want to pick up fouls in the full court press on Bueller. Uh, but both teams looking to control the tempo, maybe play this one with a fast paced style. Garris will take it out. A Mount Vernon offensively as they try to set up and establish themselves. They are a team that they feel, depending on the matchup, can do different things, but they prefer to score inside. They want to take advantage of the height. Step out shot bricked off the window from Scott. Connolly. On the left arm with the sleeve, trying to dish it inside to Pittman. It's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay here. Connolly had that, that I don't know if it was an elbow or an arm injury, but that is what sidelined him for a big bulk of the season. But just coming back, this is about his fourth or fifth game back since that injury, and he is a welcome sight. Yeah, out for nine weeks with a broken elbow. He mm. is back in playing. It's been moved from Garris. Alterman has a look around. Scott pulls up, long two, clings off the rim. Quickly up ahead, Beeler off the dribble. Catch and shoot, Pittman off the back iron. Alterman going in transition, Goba crashes inside and reverses with the right hand. Here's Shia Goba, the man that Mount Vernon's calling their most improved player. Yeah, he's been great this season. Had 16 points and seven rebounds in their first matchup against Mount Pisgah. Ball quickly back in the hands of Alterman. He saunters back outside. Dribble pass off, Garris through traffic for two. Pittman racing away down the floor, up with the right hand, rebound Chagog. Quick pace here, Mount Vernon playing with it, moving quickly, Chagog went up with authority but couldn't bring it down. Williams kisses it in. It floats it in, rather. Ooh, bad turnover, but that was a big bucket for Jackson Williams to get the Patriots on the board down 6 nothing early on. Just looking at them physically, not to say Mount Pisgah is, is small by any means. They have very nice size. They can go 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, got a 6'4 wing, but Zay Chagog just looks like a man out there, number five. Trey Scott, obviously, at 6'10", is a grown big boy, and even... Goba and of course Garris who is well built at the guard position. They are just sturdy across the board. Williams an important player for Mount Pisgah. 16 points per game. One of their top scorers. Pittman back to Connolly. Beeler sees an open lane. Kicks it out. Pittman catch and shoot off the front rim. Alterman outside, Scott knocks it down. A three-pointer for Mount Vernon, their first of the day. Scott showing some versatility in the attack. Ooh. Goba earns it back for Mount Vernon. You see Dennis Scott, he, he kind of checked where his feet were to knock down that three, but boy, <laughs> it doesn't matter. He could shoot beyond that college three-point line. It does not matter. That big man has some 
NBA range. Uh, of course, getting that from his father that played in the league for many, many years. You see Bramir Young, or Bramir Long, sorry, number two, just checked in the game. He's a guy that really changes momentum with his effort, usually. Goba at the rim is fouled. goes against Connolly. Says Goba at the line. 14 points per game this season, 22 in the playoffs. We've had a lot of contributions this Mount Vernon team. I'm just looking at what I've been able to find during this postseason run. They got four players averaging in double figures, and it's not just 10. 10, 10, 11, it's what you said, 22 points, 17 points, 11 points, 11 points. That is significant firepower. A lot of guys that can score in bunches. That makes them dangerous. Mount Pisgah down nine early, looking for Connolly offensively. It's had tough luck on some threes early on. They're going to have to hit threes. That's one of their key, key strong suits. They move the ball well, find those drift to the corner threes if they're not hitting. Ooh, Goba with an acrobatic move. You see his <laughs> improved offensive production, great in the postseason, very strong in the regular season, and off to a quick start with six points. Now already more than a 10-point game, not even six minutes in yet. Connolly spins, dishes back outside to Williams. He'll pull up from 17 feet away. Looping pass up ahead, Chagog under control and has the composure to finish with a man falling on top of him. Looked like a NFL receiver. Get that man some pads. I could see him lining up wide receiver, maybe even a tight end at six foot six. Very impressive. And a timeout here from Mount Pisgah, 15 to two. Mount Vernon has the lead. They will take a second to recalibrate things. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. What a fantastic start from Mount Vernon. We know Mount Pisgah has some fantastic players, some offensive guys like Jackson Williams that can get going. He really fuels the offense. They look to him. They look to Connolly to get the scoring going. For Connolly, he's had some good looks from three, but just hasn't quite been falling yet. A little bit to be desired from their offense here in the first quarter. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll get it going. There's a couple other spark plugs we haven't quite seen yet. Tommy Smith has had a a really nice run lately. Uh, he's a guy that provides some versatility at the swing man position, can knock down some outside shots. Again, Bramir Long has entered the game, hasn't had the ball in his hands yet, uh, but he is a, a really good playmaker that can get others involved as well. You see Tommy Smith checking into the game for the first time now. Um, not the ideal start if you are the Patriots, but plenty of time to dig yourself out of this hole. Absolutely. Just over two minutes and 20 seconds to play. Connolly out of a timeout with Mount Pisgah offensively able to maybe draw up a play in the huddle. Williams to Beeler. Now under 10 on the shot clock. Williams, Connolly, top of the key. Thought about the three, goes behind the back. Pittman is fouled on the floor. Garris. Hit the deck there going after him. Writhing in pain. Hopefully it's not anything serious. He's a, a player that dealt with a couple injuries throughout the year. Kawain Garris averaging close to 19 points, five rebounds per game. Southern Illinois offer, Kennesaw State offer, Old Dominion offer, Georgia State offer. Had 16 points and seven rebounds in their first meeting. Hopefully he is okay. As he's a down getting treatment, we'll take a break and give you an update when we come back.
on the NFHS network. We've moved Garris off the court. He's headed to the bench to get some more treatment. Able to walk under his own power just gingerly. We hope to see him return if he can. Pittman drives, pump fake is effective. Mount Pisgah after the break, able to score. Nice job playing off two feet. Alterman pinned up, lofts it over to the far side of the floor to Montgomery, who's freshly checked into the game for Mount Vernon. Montgomery, you just see, you just see that, that build. He is a monster of an athlete, really well put together. More so of an energy defensive guy at this point in his career, but has a very nice upside. Alterman launches a three. 18 to four. Taken away, Scott. Quick dish to Alterman. Open near side off the back iron. Three-pointer attempted by Pace Bottoms. Beeler, long two, or three they call it. Big one for Mount Pisgah. Goba nearly saved it, but it's out of bounds. That was a big shot from Beeler. I know it's only three points, but you got to start to feel good about yourself. Putting points on the board, you need every one you can get. Down 11, it feels like it's a lot worse, but still very manageable and an opportunity to cut into this lead even more. Since January 1st, he's been shooting over 40% from beyond the arc, someone you have to watch out for. He hits a three, a little wind in the sails for Mount Pisgah. What they needed. Pittman to Beeler. Pittman working on Montgomery, spins, fades away. Alterman again working with tempo. Weaves by a couple of defenders, trying to go, send it off to Goba for a jam, but wave off the shot, travel called. That's all we have for the first quarter. 18 to seven, we'll be right back to move you into second quarter action here on the NFHS Network. Thank you all for tuning in. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Back with you. 18-7. Mount Vernon's got the lead. Mount Pisgah's got the ball here to begin the second quarter. It's into Pittman. Mount Pisgah out of Johns Creek, Georgia. Pittman spots it up from beyond the college line. Goba. Baseline drive and finishes. Making it look easy, just get to the basket, settle yourself, and elevate for the finish. Showing off awareness down low. Mount Vernon now up 13. Beeler, and there's a foul called. That'll go against Goba. Foul. Team 
Smith. Off to Connolly. Oh. Look at Alterman handle the rock, handle pressure, find the open man, good ball movement, but better defense from Connolly to swipe it away. Now Alterman will put it in play for Mount Vernon. Alterman, five assists per game, leads the team. Goba going to work in the post, lofts it up off the heel. Couple of touches from Scott were not enough to do it. Catch and shoot, right wing three goes for Smith. Big shot, gonna have to hit threes. Down 10, but Tommy Smith, one of many options that can knock it down from the perimeter. Smith averaging 12 points per game in the past eight games. He's really come on throughout this postseason run. Bottoms inside, Chagog is fouled. That is where the Mustangs just have a major advantage, just not a whole lot Pisca can do if Mount Vernon is able to punch the ball inside to Chagog. And even Scott, I know Trey Scott more of a, a three-point specialist, but at 6'10", he's 6'10", he can finish inside. First free throw off the front rim. Chagag at the stripe, nearly averaging a double-double this season. He's the team's leader in rebounds on the Mount Vernon side. Positions himself really well down low. Gets one of the two free throws. Long, lofts it over for Williams, breaking in, passing out to Connolly. Baseline, a swarm around Chagog, and a travel's called. Good defense, gotta be able to dig down, make life difficult, especially when the Mustangs get the ball up close. That means bring multiple players, you gotta do it. Pittman strides down the floor, kicks it out to Smith, he's hit one three, and can't knock down the jumper. Really like this matchup. Two heady, quick guards going at it. Undersized guards at that. Alterman left open. Can't make Mount Pisgah pay, but there is an offensive board from Goba. Bottoms, quick pass, Chagog. It's an offensive foul. Charge taken by Pittman on the inside. Taking it on the chest. That's a big boy that he just drew that charge on. We saw it earlier in that Paideia game. They took two or three charges, winning plays this time of year. Tyson Pittman pats the pill, averaging a solid 14 points per game. And he's fouled on that shot attempt. Nice job, little bully ball you know he, he felt like he had the size and strength advantage on Alterman got him underneath the rim and then powered into him to draw the foul you look at some of the point guards in 1A division 1 basketball some of them not as big of scores but Pittman proven that he can get up in the 20 plus point per or points range had 21 against Mount Bethel to clinch a tournament berth for the Mount Pisgah team, which meant a lot considering their record. Had a rough stretch, had an eight-game losing streak in their season, but the way they've been able to come back has been fueled by players like Pittman as they've handled the adversity well this season. Yeah, he really stepped up when Connolly was out, and he's averaging just a shade under 10 points per game here in the postseason. Chagog, acrobatic finish over one guy and gets it to go. Long directs traffic. Long off the dribble, right side, stops down low, but he kept going, travel. 
See Coach Maben on the sideline telling Pace Bottoms when he's guarding Vermeer Long. Back off, back off. You're guarding him above the college three-point line. Sag down. Don't give him so much um, leeway. You know, give him some space. Play off him. He's not going to shoot from 25, 30 feet. Scott launches from range off the iron. Pace Bottoms gives it a try. Nothing but net. Pace Bottoms, a former St. Pius great. My man Luke Wynn still a proud Golden Lion. Off to Connolly. He can't answer. Long tips it away. And we have a timeout taken. Timeout for Mount Vernon, 26-11. I don't know what the but we we a bit of a hold up. Yeah, I don't I don't know what was going on. We don't have media timeouts or anything like that. But uh, yes, he finally, Coach Maven gets his timeout. Well, as they get their timeout, we'll get ours. We'll be right back with you after this. Four minutes to go until halftime. Mount Vernon with a bit of a command on this game as they inbound to Scott. Facing pressure from Mount Pisgah, a team that defensively has held opponents in the playoffs to about 50 points per game. Scott finds the open man, bottoms, drives, back out to Scott. Long, active hands of takeaway, breaking into the open floor. It's packed off the backboard by Goba, but finished by Connolly. That is why you run the floor. Do not take anything for granted. Well done. Been a little tough for Connolly on the outside shot, so gets one inside, maybe helps him establish offensively. Bottom steps into a pass to Chagog. Back out to him for three. Goba, Bottoms, pump fake, finds his spot, and he's off the mark. Goba rises up, left it short, but he got fouled. You just see the, the size and the athleticism of Mount Vernon getting second and third chance opportunities against Mount Pisgah, really testing that front court of the Patriots. Goba's at the stripe. Shia Goba. There's a few guys on this team alongside Trey Scott, KJ Garris that have been consistent players throughout the season that as some of the other guys have gotten hurt, they've been able to be the anchor, as Coach Maven said, for their squad. Speaking of Garris, he is back on the floor. That is very good to see for the Mustangs. Freshly checked in, looks to be moving around well. Long, who's also moving around well, gets down the court in a hurry, gives it off to Pittman. And Connolly has a go in the lay, and it's packed away by Chagog. Wow, that's a, that's an easy two points in probably 98% of the games they play, uh, but not against Mount Vernon. Zay Chagog can cover ground defensively. No doubt about that. Averaging a block per game. Connolly fires away. Oh. Well, it saved the <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> it saved it. That was effective. Foul called in transition as Garris coming down the floor looks to be quite all right. 
Oh, my heavens, yes. But uh, that last play, I thought we were about to see a decapitation with that ball <laughs> bouncing everywhere. Holy smokes. Off the backboard, off ahead, and Yikes. it seems like everybody's okay. <laughs> hey, speaking of headers, we do have the face of Australian women's soccer, Luke Winstall. So if you need to talk about football, Wega Bonita right here. Luke Winstall knows everything. Luke Winstall, always talking sports, always talking Australian women's soccer. The Matildas, right? That's Something right. like that. Here yep. you go. Yep. <laughs> Appreciate the shout out, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> of course. Did not pay him for that. <laughs> Two minutes and 45 seconds to go until halftime. <laughs> That's what we say. A Kyle Sandy broadcast is always an interesting one. So. Always an interesting always one. Always an interesting one. Glad to have you with us and glad to have. All the fans here tuning in. Mount Pisgah with the ball down 14, trying to make some headway before halftime. Foul called as Long drives in. For Mount Pisgah, someone who's been quiet and has been their probably their best player during this postseason run, Jackson Williams. He came into this game averaging 17 points per game during the playoffs. He has two points right now. Really got to find a way to get the six foot four sophomore swing man going. Very versatile player. Really has popped up on some radars this season. Has a great two years ahead of him. Got to get him going. Long hits the free throw. Montgomery will come back in for Mount Vernon. And then Pittman's back in for Mount Pisgah. Or actually, he just walks back into the frame here. Long hits it. And Mount Vernon will inbound. Uh, very different from the girls' game we just saw, but kind of feels similar. Uh, hanging around Mount Pisgah, just like Athens Christian kind of did with St. Francis for a while, but then St. Francis really blew him out in the fourth quarter. Mount Pisgah just trying to make it a game up until that point. Alterman around a pick from Chicago. Tries a floater. Out of bounds, Mount Vernon retains possession. Winner of this game will head on the road to Macon to play against the Paideia Pythons, who knocked off the Savannah Blue Jackets earlier today in the 3 o'clock semifinal. Nice move from Scott, and he gets it done. Very easy, simple move, a little drop step. Don't find him on the block too often, but he is very efficient when he is down there. Pittman found his way in. Williams just off on the finish. Goba, spin move, blocked away from behind. Williams got in on that one. Maybe that'll spark his offense. Just missed that put back down there. But Williams, he is a key to success for the Patriots. Starting to get involved a little bit more. Jackson Williams, sophomore point guard slash shooting guard. Scott, corner three. Yes, sir. Pittman packed away. Goba got his hand on it. Gabe Alterman saved it. Goba goes right and finishes cleanly. He has had a great senior season. He has really elevated his stock, and you're seeing it not just on the defensive side of the ball anymore. He can really do it offensively. Connolly. Goba, Scott, thought about it. Alterman will hold it up. 40 seconds on the game clock, but we do have a shot clock here. 16 seconds on it. Alterman. Goba inside. Chicago one dribble. Back out. Alterman launches and connects. A college three ball for Gabe Alterman. Top of the key. Nothing but net. 37 15. Don't look now, it's more than a 20 point game here in the first half. That balloon quickly 
And I was just saying it kind of reminded me of this previous girls game, St. Francis and Athens Christian. You look up at the scoreboard and it's 20, and that's exactly what has happened here in the past, what, three, four minutes. Now Long has a chance to settle Mount Pisgah down at the free throw line, pick up some points here, heading toward halftime. Garris is back in for Mount Vernon, and Harrison Estenson is also back in, or he's in for the first time, I believe. Long second free throw does hit. Goba behind the back, running the floor in transition. Mm. Williams, an athletic rebound. He was fouled on the way down. Thought they were going to let him play on for a second. I did think uh, Montgomery got him with the body. Matt Pisgah, of course, in the bonus right now. 12 seconds to go. They're be shooting two free throws here. Just not a lot has really gone right, especially offensively for Mount Pisgah. Just haven't been able to can those open threes. They've hit two of them so far. Points in the paint have been hard to come by with this size of Mount Vernon, and they are really getting crushed on the glass. We'll have to tally that up for the halftime uh, show, but boy, oh boy, Mustangs have dominated in the paint. Garris finds Goba, and he puts it down. Goba with an emphatic end to the first half of play. 41-17, Mount Vernon is rolling through two quarters. We'll react to it, look forward, and much more in the halftime show here on the NFHS Network when we rejoin you. Going to college for esports feels amazing. Growing up, it's something I never thought would happen. My family never thought it would happen. And then within two and a half years, here I am. He's actually a madman whenever it comes to playing on the sticks. You know, he's going to be the first one that pursues this into an academic career. Me getting an esports scholarship could show other students that it's possible for them to, as long as they put their mind to it and put some effort into it. brands at the best prices at Academy Sports and Outdoors, you'll always find more fun. More of this and this. And more of this and this. So you can do more of that. And that. And that. And definitely some of that. While getting together for more of that. That. And that. Yes! Have more fun with great brands at the best prices. Only at Academy Sports and Outdoors.
Going to college for esports feels amazing. Growing up, it's something I never thought would happen. My family never thought it would happen. And then within two and a half years, here I am. He's actually a madman whenever he comes to play on the sticks. You know, he's going to be the first one that pursues this into an academic career. We're back with you at the half here on the NFHS Network. Alongside Kyle Sandy, I'm Luke Winstall. Let's take a look at the way that half ended. We have a big dunk from Goba, a big run from... Mount Vernon, they're actually adapting the scoreboard right now. Yeah, well, they're up uh, like 90 <laughs> points right now. 41-17 is the correct score. Yeah, I was going to say, wait a minute. We're in the 80s. We're working down to the 70s. I don't yeah. know what's going on they're with the scoreboard. They're having to fix the score. But regardless, Mount Vernon has run things up offensively. Yeah. They've done very well. 41 points in one half is – It's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah. we take a look at what they've done. What's made them so successful here? They've used that size. They're winning the battle on the boards, 21 to 8. They're explosive. They're athletic. Shia Goba's got 13 points, continuing his trend of averaging over 20 points per game. It feels like he's well on his way to getting that amount today. Uh, everything's working for the Mustangs. They jumped out 15-2. We saw K.J. Garris go down with the injury. Um, he was out for a while, but he returned back on the floor. He looks healthy, and they have been rolling uh, even when he was off the floor. So just everything really working. They've been so tough defensively. Mount Pisgah just unable to hit some open threes. I think they've made about two threes so far. And then everything in the paint, it just has not come easily. I just laugh because every time I look at the scoreboard, it's 139 to 17 right now. Yeah, so we might be going home. I don't know what's going on with these malfunctions. Somebody hit a button here. That's, that's where the laughter came from at the beginning of the segment I, here. Hey, we got, we got a fix. 41-17. There we go. 41-17. Okay. Um, Mount Pisgah offensively trying to get things going yeah. in the locker room right now you're a team that feels like you've got the firepower if you're going to come back it'll take a herculean effort but it's right. something that you feel like you've got the players to do it state runner up last year this team didn't return very much of that only 10.8 points per game yeah. of last year's team returned so it's a new crop if you're coaching if you're in that locker room what does the message have to be to a group of guys that really haven't been on this stage but have the talent to do this don't abandon the game plan and continue to believe. You're here because you're an underdog, but underdogs, they always fight to the final bell. It doesn't matter what the score says. Continue to go out there and play basketball the right way. Continue to try and draw charges. Continue to swing the ball around the perimeter. you got to get this Mount Vernon team, this, these big guys, moving side to side. Swing the ball. The ball meets uh, beats uh, as far as dribbling the ball. Ball in the air is always a much quicker. you just got to make sure that you can get – Mount Vernon out of position and hit some open threes. You've seen O'Neal Connolly, his shot hasn't been falling from the perimeter. Uh, their leading score is three points. They have about three or four players with just three points. Um, it's a team that does it by committee. It's usually 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, but everyone's having a bit of an off night. Isaac Beeler has knocked down a three, um, but Jackson Williams, I, I think we saw him kind of getting a little more into the game as this first half wore on. Uh, I, I want to see him with his energy, but it just comes to continuing to play the right way, trusting in your teammates, and don't stray from the game plan. I see a bit of why there's some hype around Shia Goba right now yeah. and what he's done. We've seen some good moments from him in the first half, but who stood out most to you on the Mount Vernon side of what you've seen so far? Goba's been, been great, but Zay Shigog, he's had some wow moments with his ability to play above the rim, blocked a shot down here, sent that ball into the first or second row. Uh, he's impressive. When he wants a seal on the low block and he gets positioned, there's just not much that Mount Pisgah can do to stop Zay Chagall, the West Georgia signee. And then if you look at Mount Pisgah coming out of Johns Creek, they've battled some adversity. They'll have to do it again. So we'll look at Mount Pisgah when we come back here on the NFHS Network, a team trying to come down from a 41-17 halftime deficit. We'll be right back after this. Hey, Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The Conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! <laughs>
I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for all that you do officiating high school football. What you do matters, and what you do is important for our student athletes. Without you and what you do, it's just practice. I know you've worked hard in your preparation this offseason, and now it's game time. Go out there and calm like you see them. Embrace the grind. And the biggest thing of all is to have fun. Please, stay safe, have a great season, and we'll all be watching. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. on the NFHS Network. Alongside Kyle Sandy, I'm Luke Winstall, and we do actually have a score change. All the scoreboard updating and configuring was for a reason, and that reason is Mount Vernon does not have 41 points. They have 39. That's what they've come with out of halftime here. So 39-17. Maybe they didn't count the dunk at the end. Uh, you know, What do you see, Kyle? I, I think they might have counted that last dunk for two baskets for four points because it was just so explosive. They just you know, hit it twice. <laughs> to give him an extra two points but uh it's too exciting right so we're, we're, we got a 22 point game here plenty of time to go again mount pisca uh, don't smash the panic button continue to play basketball the right way and uh see if you can hit some shots in this second half first three minutes gonna be crucial gonna be huge gonna be big uh we'll see what coach jay sloan has up his sleeve Alterman for Mount Vernon, Gabe Alterman. Such an interesting player to watch. He has handled the pressure so well. Not a huge score because he sets up his teammates a lot. He really organizes his team and really puts everybody in the right position. Three-pointer for Garris. Great way to begin the half for Mount Vernon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrific. He, he, he looks healthy. He's got that strong lower half that really stands out to me. Very strong quad, just a big physical guard. And he can shoot it as he saw it right there. Mount Vernon has the first bucket of every quarter so far. Mm -hmm. Pittman off on the three. Garris launches again off the rim. Quick possession. Tipped away. Montgomery going for it. And Human Yora nearly had it. Up for Chicago, Goba pulls it down, foul on the floor. Could have seen another highlight right there if it wasn't stripped away. Mount Wait. Vernon keeping their foot on the gas pedal. Yeah, the way he's able to just take off two feet <laughs> on the ground. He's fun. I'm telling you, tomorrow's going to be fun. That Toombs County game is going to be fun. You'll get a kick out of Dominic Eason and what he's able to do as an aerial act. Looking forward to that. The 2A games on deck in Milledgeville. Four games tomorrow. Two girls games, two boys games. Quarterfinals. Montgomery, Alterman. Daring Connolly to close him out. Nearly got the finger roll to fall. Williams. Bursting forward, and he goes coast to coast for two. Really good sign to see Jackson get downhill like that. Goba answers. Can't 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 trade baskets. It can't be that easy. That's uh you know you get a positive on one side of the ball, and then within five seconds that that two point advantage is quickly erased. That's a uh, that, that stinks if you're a Patriot. Yumanyora bounced it over.
6.08 to go in the third, 44-19. Now Pisgah will make a substitution and inbound as Smith walks in. Mount Pisgah with a nice little crowd. You see the girls basketball team underneath the basket cheering on the Patriots. Their season came to a close at Rabin County in the Sweet 16. Very fun matchup, 70 to 54. Rabin County, one of the teams we saw earlier. Great girls basketball today. Williams packed away by Goba. Connolly is there to corral it and give it off to Baylor. Connolly. Pittman. Deep. Long three. Deep. Close to NBA range there where his feet were. Alterman to Garris. Goba, composed on the inside, misses the mark. Whistle blown in transition. Mount Pisgah trying to speed things up a bit here. Probably a good idea. Yeah, as far as Jackson Williams, his, his two hoops have come in coast to coast transition points. Quick downhill, tried that last attempt uh, and you saw that erase by you know, Goba and and Chicago have been just so tough using their athleticism to block shots. It's just something that Mount Pisgah is obviously used to playing in Region 6, but they haven't seen a lot of it during their state playoff run at Tryon, at Raven County, and at Bleckley. They don't have the size or the athleticism that the Mustangs do. Connolly all tied up there with Alterman. It's a jump ball possession arrow in favor of Mount Pisgah. Timeout from Mount Vernon. 5.09 to go in the third. We'll take it with the teams here on the NFHS Network and be right back after this. you on the NFHS Network. Mount Vernon takes the time out there up 25 getting things settled in defensively as Connolly will inbound for Mount Pisgah. Program that was GHSA runner up a year ago. Only had three returners. Had to move a lot of things into place quickly and they put mm. together a very nice tournament run to make it here to the semifinals. Pittman crosses over. Pace Bottoms, an athletic save. Garris. Alterman. Goba wow. somehow finds his way into the rim. The game has really slowed down this year for Goba. You see he gets inside, he doesn't panic, he gathers himself and explodes up to the basket. Oh, talking about explosion, there's Long using that quick first step to get in the lane. And Pisgah out to 21 points now. And showing some pressure. Ooh. It's successful. A rare turnover from Gabe Alterman. A little bit of positivity for the Patriots to use that trap, little run and jump, and force a turnover. Long, the sophomore point guard, hands it off. Williams back to Long. Connolly thought about it in the corner, crosses over behind the back, crashing into the lane and converts a tough reverse layup. Yes, tough is the right word. That was very impressive. You can see why he's going to Montevallo with skills like that along the baseline. Goba, pass to Chagog. Spin move and just enough touch to make it work. 
That's just grown man bumping bodies, using his lift to finish. Connolly steps into it. There it is, a three-pointer from the Mount Pisgah leading scorer. Warming up that tough baseline drive. Now a three, obviously 22 points down, but signs of life from O'Neal Connolly. Yeah, it's one of those where you say, there it is. Mm -hmm. So tough, felt like a lid on the basket for him earlier. Now he's got a couple of makes. We'll see what that momentum might or might not turn into. Fun player to watch regardless. 3.20 to go in the third. Good defense, long. Ooh. Goba stepped before he dribbled. A little happy feet. Wanted to get to that spin move back baseline. Jackson Williams, who put up 21 points, had nine assists and eight rebounds. So not far off a triple-double in the quarterfinal game. Is getting set to inbound, but first he's got to figure out his jersey situation. Mm. So he'll head out for a brief moment. Peeled the jersey off, left it on the sideline. He's into the tunnel. I'm sure we'll see him back in a minute as Beeler has entered in his place. That's a heck of a souvenir for a lucky fan. Go down on the court, grab that jersey. They'll never know. Pittman to Long. Left side, corner three. Connolly is fouled. Give him three at the line. Little momentum. Connolly, it, it feels like his legs are under him now. He was a little flat on those shots early on, but it now is like he's, he, it feels like he's spring loaded. He's ready to catch and shoot. Obviously, the shot didn't go in, but he's got a chance to add three from the foul line. Team leader in points and rebounds per game. Missed nine weeks in the season due to the elbow injury that's got him wearing a sleeve on the left arm. I don't know how it feels, but with the white uniform, looks good enough maybe to keep. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm a fan of the sleeve out there. Yeah, he's got a little mechanical brace to it to keep everything in, intact, it looks like. Yeah, keep it all in check. So hit that free throw and... Be back out for one more. Of course, ruled a three-pointer, so three free throws come because of it. Had 19 points in the quarterfinal matchup. We know what he can do. Hmm. So Jackson Williams has trotted back around the floor. He's wearing a number 33 jersey now. Chagag lost control of it. Pittman is helping to lead the pack with Connolly. Long spin move, tried to dish it. Chagag was there to make it all messy and cleaned up by Connolly. Connolly's been everywhere offensively. They're digging back into this down 19. I know, I know, but they're playing much better and Connolly's been in the middle of everything for the Patriots. Close the gap by six, and Goba puts it down. Anytime he catches inside, looking to bring the hammer. <laughs> he is quick off the floor, and he knows how to finish. Pittman. Ball trickles around. It was last touched by Mount Pisgah. Mount Vernon, up 21, has possession. So Williams is now in, he's got the number 33 jersey on. So number 11 is now 33. Larry Bird, he wore number 33, right? He was a great player back in the day for the Boston Celtics. Maybe the jersey change will be a good <laughs> luck charm for Williams. It's like, a, what was that Disney show, the jersey, and they would like put on the jersey and they would turn into that sports superstar and then would be in their body and play. That was back in maybe the early 2000s. Probably weren't even born yet. <laughs> Goba gets the two-point shot, and Mount Vernon calls the timeout. Uh, what NBA player's jersey are you putting on in that situation? Oh, geez. NBA player. I mean, I know you could uh. say, you know, Jordan, LeBron. Those are the easy answers. Uh. Uh, maybe something a little different. Mine would be Kyle Korver. I know he's after that time. But. Yeah, you know, I, I was a fan of Reggie Evans. Joker, he was a great rebounder mm. back in the day. Came off the bench, and all he would do was take maybe two shots but grab down 20 rebounds. Don't have many players like that in the NBA anymore. 
Kyle Korver is the one that made me want to shoot threes. How so. was your three-point shot? Aaron Parr never gave you a chance at St. Pius. No, I, What's I, the deal? They needed a floor a spacer chance. against Upson Lee. No, you no. were the missing piece against Ty Fagan and company. <laughs> you got to get, got to run some plays, a couple elevator screens for Luke no. Winslow, get him open. He's too busy doing all this media stuff. No, I think I was, in, I was in the place I was supposed to be in, Kyle. It all worked <laughs> In out. the broadcast I, booth. I, I, think, I think that's my best spot on the all floor. All parties are pleased with how so, history has been written. I that's understand. right. Those were some fun games, but we've gotten to, you know, have the pleasure of working some great games, and some of the best ones we've seen have been here in Milledgeville and over in Macon for the state championships, and we've really enjoyed getting to do this, and ever since 2016 get to talk to you about it mm, yeah it's uh, crazy how time flies you were a young pup and now you're a grown man uh, a national nationally renowned international internationally renowned journalist sports journalist media member so you've done big things and i'm still here watching 16 year olds play basketball so kudos to you thank you kyle <laughs> well, you know, we all love Sandy Spiel getting to keep up. You're the best in the game here in the GHSA. Glad to have you with us. <laughs> and glad to have Connolly out there on the floor looking as good as he has here offensively, though he does miss that shot. Garris in the paint. Gets the finish from Chicago. Yeah, just super easy. I mean... Tough to block him out in the first place, but when you're that big, that explosive, that is that is a layup, literally a layup. Easy money for Chagog. Bottoms will come back in. Not Vernon's had some solid depth that they can rotate in. Yeah. Two or three guys off the bench that you wouldn't even really consider bench players. Very good. A lot of these kids would start on a lot of teams across the state, especially in this classification, because going into this state tournament, 32 teams, right? Only 14 teams had a winning record in Class A Division One on the boys' side. That is, that is uh, very interesting and somewhat hard to believe. But uh, you're seeing some of the best here, and even Mount Pisgah not even above 500. 14 and 17. Yep. Uh, but they're a lot different than other 14 and 17 teams across the state. Yeah, and you look at that. You look at things of injuries, of course. Yep. But you also look at teams that schedule really tough. Goba, who is really tough, misses inside, but Scott's there to finish it for him. Just a tap off the rim. And that's all it took. Williams in the 33, fouled on his way in for a layup. He'll get two shots out of it. Williams knocks down the free throw. This has been a very impressive performance from Mount Vernon. Eliminated on this stage last year by a four seed from their region. Seeing a similar type, you know, a four seed, region six. No, no bad memories from last year. They have completely dominated from the opening tip up 15 to two and have not looked back. Alterman jump ball with Smith. It will be Mount Vernon possession. Alterman's been involved with both of the jump balls we've had in this quarter. Late substitution for Mount Vernon. Checking in for Mount Vernon number 15, Ethan Siggers. Ethan Siggers has come in. At number 15, who's inbounded the ball, who's fresh in. Garris through the legs, working past Long. Scott, Garris, 20 seconds to play. Shot clock difference, a little over two seconds. Goba gave it all. Garris scoops it around and makes it happen. That's it for the third quarter. Mount Vernon continues with their high offensive output. Nearly a 20-point quarter for them. We'll be right back with the final eight minutes of play. Alongside Kyle Sandy, I'm Luke Winstall. Thank you all for tuning in. What rhymes with great? 
participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Back with you on the NFHS Network. 58-31. That's our scoreline right now. We talked about Mount Pisgah trying to come back in the third quarter. Their offense looked better. We've talked about them a good bit. Now Mount Vernon, of course, the story today. Just continuing to pump out points. They've averaged 89 points per game. They might not hit that. 89 in the playoffs. They might not hit that today. But still, very good offensive showing talent everywhere Williams just off and Scott's got the board Alterman with the pink sneakers off to Goba spinning in the lane they'll call him backside official will say it's a travel and it is so Mount Pisgah will possess Mount Vernon, the defense, especially inside, is really tough to crack. It's been one of their strengths today. Williams tries from the outside. Fan almost got nailed there on that pass. Intended for pace bottoms, just a little miscommunication. Pittman's come back in from Mount Pisgah. We're going to have two Region 6 teams playing for the state title again. It, very likely that we will be seeing Mount Vernon, the number one team in the state, play for their first ever state title. They'll be playing Paideia, who Paideia beat them in their first meeting, 61-58, but in the Region Championship, um, Mount Vernon really able to handle their business, 66-48, and the Mustangs, they look like they are really clicking on all cylinders right now with that size, the guard play with Alterman and company, uh, just top to bottom, one of the best teams in the state playing their best ball of the season. One of those teams that gets to this point, has really high talent level. Coach Maben, of course, doing good work with his squad. Pace Bottoms knocks it down. Smooth release, comes off the bench, opens up the floor, can really shoot it, had 17 points in their 89-61 win over Oglethorpe County. Scott has the rebound. Quickly in transition, Goba bounces it off to Garris. That was pretty, Goba just finding his way to the basket, crafty and a beautiful bounce pass. Goba had his body all in front of that ball. Garris just strong on the layup. Connolly pulls it down. Ultraman almost had that tip in. He's about five foot eight and still almost got up there to knock it in. 63-31. Pittman turns it over. Garris commanding the offense over to Alterman. Off the backboard, and Goba finishes. It is getting out of hand here, getting a little sloppy on the Mount Pisgah side, and Mustangs really starting to have fun. The gates are open, and the horses are off and running. They sure are, Kyle. 5.41 to go in the quarter. Full timeout. We'll be right back. What rhymes with 
great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Back with you on the NFHS Network, 541. So, Luke, what do you think about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey? Oh. We haven't even covered that yet. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Was it fixed? Was it rigged? Was it legit? And is that a real potential marriage, or are they just doing it for the likes on Instagram? What are your thoughts? I think that's too many questions all at one time. Smith hits a three. I guess, you know, it is a broadcast of a sports game, so the fact we haven't shown Taylor Swift is pretty good. <laughs> That's right. Chicago on the right side, using the length to get two points down the floor. Xavier, Chicago. Beeler, crossover, outside, catch and shoot. Smith, short off the rim. Trying to make it too straight. Smith gets in the passing lane, keeps that away from Goba, who... Might have been ready to go up and jam again. Not many second chance opportunities at all for Mount Pisgah. I have them for just one putback today. And uh, these total numbers, as far as the rebounding battle goes, we're talking Mount Vernon's probably in the 30s. Mount Pisgah maybe, maybe 15. I'll have to add that up at the end of this. But this has just been utter domination in the paint. And to no surprise, Mount Vernon is just huge and athletic. And they play extremely hard. Yeah, just some kind of a two-to-one ratio, at least, has been the field rebounding. I think that's kind of just the way that Mount Vernon has been able to dominate this year. They're a team that feels pretty well-rounded. Obviously, they've shown they can hit the three, so not just a team that plays inside, though they do say they prefer to play inside, a team that defends, rebounds, values the ball, all those kind of overall cliches. But they've shown it here, and they've proven it's not just something they say, it's something they do. And Chagag shows that scoring is something that he can do very easily on an inbound play. Yeah, just really handling their business. 34-13 to 13 is what I have as far as the rebounding battle goes. Williams a bit strong on the inside. Garris thought about slowing it down. Gives it out to Pace Bottoms in transition for a three. Chagag goes up. Williams pats it away. And he gives it off to Connolly. Connolly, corner, Smith. Baseline drive, popped out from behind. Bottoms off to Goba, tried the Euro step, but good hustle defensively from Smith and Williams to be in the right position. Pittman will check back in. Checking in, number four, Tyson Pittman. Pittman in, Connolly out. And for Mount Vernon, Harrison Estenson wearing the number two jersey in blue. Bottoms. Smith outside to Beeler. Pittman has an Ooh. opening on the left side and draws a foul. Garris bumped him on his way in. Yeah, it looked like Garris, I, I guess he bumped him first, but right after that bump, you saw that chicken wing come up from Pittman. <laughs> Pittman coming in, a couple of steals per game, leads the team in that category defensively. 14 points a game here in his senior season. Tyson Pittman is at the line with 344 to play. 
While we're at it, big thank you to our crew, Josh Tanner producing, Rick Winstall manning the camera here for you in Milledgeville, and a thank you to the Bobcats and everybody in the Georgia College Athletics Department, especially Bailey Clark for helping mm. to host today. She got us our internet, got us some power. Always big shout out to Bailey. Lovely young woman, lovely young woman does a great job in the athletics department for Georgia College. Graduate assistant SID, big props to her and props to Smith for that steal. Pittman trying to loop it around. He's trying for Yuman Yora, but it will be a Mount Vernon possession after the defensive play. So a big thank you to Georgia College for the hospitality. This is the fourth game today, game four of four on Friday for A Division I semifinals, two girls games, two boys games. And tomorrow we'll have 2A from this location. Chagag, head fake inside. The defense collapsed on him, and he did travel. It's almost at that point you're up. 34, just over three minutes ago. It's almost at that time where you really pull all your starters, especially for Mount Vernon when you have another game to play and how besmirched they've been by the injury bug throughout this season. You really don't want to risk anything. You saw Garris with the rebound here. He went down earlier in the game, but obviously has come back and has looked fine. Uh, but don't want to risk anything in a blowout of this magnitude when you have a state championship coming up soon. So maybe in one more minute, and then expect Coach Maven to clear the bench. You look at Mount Vernon overcoming injuries. Alterman missed a month and a half. Chagog was out for three weeks with a toe injury. Bonhams missed 10 games due to sickness and injury. They've had guys in and out. Garris gets it to go. 71-35. They've had guys in and out due to injury this season. It's something that you look at. and You've got to think about preserving the guys. So definitely something that we expect as now we're seeing a move here, substitution coming from Mount Vernon. They'll bring in Drew Lactoen. And that sends Xavier Chagag off to the bench. He's likely done for the day, and what a good one it was for Xavier Chagag. Chagag finished with 15 points and 10 rebounds. Very impressive all throughout for the West Georgia Wolf. Couple of shots coming here for TJ Human Yora. Four points per game for him. He can contribute from beyond the arc. Gets the free throw to fall. On the Mount Vernon side, talked about the injuries. They're making the substitutions, clearing their bench. They'll be making at least one more here. They've got. Simeon Montgomery. Or, nope, not Montgomery. Got a substitution waiting to come in. 2.40 to go. Pace bottoms. Off to Garris. I think it's Ethan Siggers over there in front of the table. Floater goes. It's Garris again. Connolly, nice move, just couldn't finish it. Bottoms out ahead. Garris tracks it down and puts it in. Yeah, he's really uh, <laughs> patting the stats here, getting a lot of garbage time points. He's got eight points in the quarter. Uh, obviously, has played well before this game has gotten out of hand. But to be fair, this game was 15-2 to start. Um, just just wasn't a great night for Mount Pisgah, but not many teams do have good nights against Mount Vernon. 75-36, we'll go to commercial and rejoin you shortly.
back with you. Two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. These two teams playing again. Jump ball. And it will be Mount Vernon possession. It's not the first time they've played. Mount Vernon beat Mount Pisgah 69-43 in January. This is a game where we thought Mount Pisgah could show a little improvement, but Mount Vernon just has been so strong in and out on the three from Pace Bottoms. They've been tough to stop, tough to handle, and big ups to the Mount Vernon staff and team for what they're able to do in a tough situation in the Final Four. As you mentioned, Kyle, disappointed last year, and now they'll be headed to Macon. Yeah, there's there's no way they were going to let that happen twice, and I think they use that as motivation to finish the drill this season. Nice flip back in there. Estenson kept it alive. Ball's over in the corner. A minute, eight seconds to go. Connolly off to the bench for Mount Pisgah. He is a senior wing. Gets a big hug from his coach. Connolly had a great season. Transferred over from Holy Innocence. Was a seldom used player as far as Max Prep says. A couple points a game here and there. Transfers over here, finds his right fit, and was a superstar. Hate that he missed a lot of time in the middle of the season with that elbow injury, but the fact that he came back, worked hard to finish his season, not on the sidelines, but on the court, huge testament. Three-pointer in and out for Mount Vernon. Mount Pisgah on the ball. Congrats to Jay Sloan, their head coach, and his team on a run that people may not have expected midway through the season. They had some tough stretches. They rebounded. They were resilient, overcame adversity, got to the GHSA semifinal, a productive season following up a runner-up campaign last year. And congrats to Coach Sloan and his crew. Thank you to both coaches, of course, for supplying the numbers and the information that they did to help us highlight some players throughout this broadcast. Coach Maven and Coach Sloan were very helpful. 75-36, Mount Vernon's got the lead. Catch and shoot. Mount Pisgah, just over 30 seconds to go. In transition, layup falls for Chase Daniels. His first points for Mount Vernon today. Freshman getting in on the action. Everybody eating today in a very impressive win. Mustangs. Look great heading into the state championship. Yeah, if you're headed to state, this is the way to do it. Three-pointer on the way in good from Cam Gaines, a freshman on the other side. Final score, 77-39. Mount Vernon is headed to Macon. They'll play against the Paideia Pythons. Impressive from start to finish, jumped out on the Patriots 15 to two and never looked back. Big contributions up and down the lineup for Mount Vernon. Shia Goba, 23 points, eight rebounds, four blocks. You got 15 points apiece from Zay Shagog and Quayne Garris. Dennis Scott the third, nine points, and Gabe Alterman had six points, six rebounds and six assists. And of course, leading Mount Pisgah, O'Neill Connolly, 10 points and three rebounds. Well, thank you for that, Kyle. I think we've said all that needs to be said about this game, Mount Vernon, congratulations. And of course, to Mount Pisgah, congrats on a great season. Coach Sloan and his group were very strong. We enjoyed watching them play. Mount Vernon will head to Macon. They've got a bright future ahead, an interesting matchup against Paideia, which you can watch on the NFHS Network next week. For our producer, Josh Tanner, cameraman Rick Winstall, alongside Kyle Sandy, I'm Luke Winstall. Thank you all for joining us, and have a great rest of your evening. We'll see you back tomorrow for the GHSA 2A semifinal.